I do have something valuable to offer and I do want to touch people. So I think really just uh, kind of pushing myself and forcing myself out of my comfort zone to really put myself out there, I think is ultimately how I'm going to achieve that. Mm -hmm. um, and on a grander scale, um, I think another thing that I love about this team is one thing that we all have in common is community and caring about people and giving back. Um, and that's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I'm passionate about the area that I grew up in, um, grew up in Malvern, then I moved to uh, m &L. I also lived at another block, um, EP. So like there's, you know, I grew up all, all around Scarborough and um, I then moved to Pickering. And when I moved to Pickering, it was like, even though it's not that far, I really noticed a difference in like the schooling and, and noticing like the, the access to certain things that in, in my previous schools or my previous area, I did not have access to. So that's something that I'm super passionate about, finding a way to make it more equitable mm. um, for everybody because there's so many incredible people um, in, in the neighborhoods that I grew up in that are just like like we are, un, undiscovered gems, like mm -hmm. hidden gems that nobody knows about um, that are just kind of waiting or not, they're not waiting, but um, that opportunity is waiting for, for them. them. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they're, they're brilliant. They're they're incredible and they have a certain level of authenticity that you you can't put a price on mm -hmm. um so that's something that i really care about so giving that's back up. is a big thing yeah welcome to the dreams don't have deadlines podcast i'm your co-host marwan Monomni, and i got juice rochester rochester juice and today we have an extremely special guest without this guest right here there's no podcast. podcast oh absolutely let's just say that that is true <laughs> this is a segment for you guys where a lot of times you see me and juice in front of the camera but there's a lot of people behind the scenes that are making this whole operation run and one that is not more important actually the most important person most, yep. on the run is our program manager mm -hmm. aka producer yep. the one the only alicia wilmot <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, thank you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you, guys. Thank what do we owe the pleasure? Why are we being gifted today? Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Beyonce's in town. That's Beyonce's she's in town. Generous. So Alicia's yeah, yeah, in town. Yeah, she's feeling generous. You excited yeah. for the concert? I cannot wait. Yeah. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to cry. I'm going to dance. <laughs> all right. I'm going to have a time. All the emotions <laughs> all in mm -hmm. one. You can watch this episode after when it airs just yes. to remember yeah. what you said, you know? Exactly. See if it matches the vibe. Yeah. So, Alicia, mm -hmm. it's, uh, just for the viewers, what do you do for us? Um, you know, I'm still trying to figure that out. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I mean, I love I love working with you guys. So I'm I'm behind the scenes. Um, you know, I'm usually the one that connects with the guests, uh, deal with the scheduling, sometimes book the studio. You know, Marwan is uh, pretty incredible. So he also takes care of that as well. Um, do the pre interviews with the guests um, and then kind of follow up with them after making sure they have their social clips. Also handling the social media aspect. And uh, yeah. yeah, on top of the that's hundred things that, that you already do, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of things to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, because people don't. I say this all the time with people. It's like, hey, how's the podcast going? I'm like, it's hard, <laughs> you know. Like they're like, it looks so great, it looks so good. I'm like, thank you, but it's hard work, 100%. yo. And uh, it takes every single person to be on their job to kind of make mm -hmm. this thing happen. And if somebody's sick or something falls apart or life gets in the way, which happens all the time, it, it tends to bottleneck everything mm -hmm. that we do. So every single person is is really important to kind of make this thing happen. 100%. We really form like Voltron to uh, get these episodes out. Yeah. And mm -hmm. a big part of that is you, you know, making sure our social media looks good, telling us when it, when it doesn't, <laughs> you know, uh, getting our guests uh, in order suggesting guests um sitting down with them doing pre-interviews with them so we have we're we're known of what's going on if we haven't met them before you know so it's a it's a full production it's a full process and uh we can't thank you enough for being a part of it 100 you know? percent. without mm -hmm. you yes. it would not be possible yeah we know thank that you. and we appreciate your timeliness because uh i think alicia is the only person that has 100 percent consistently made every team meeting oh my god a she few puts minutes us all, all to shame before to shame. it even starts <laughs> yeah. i'm always trying to beat her yeah, to be no. the first one but <laughs> she happens. has historically 
feel was. But <laughs> uh, I want to ask Alicia just for the viewers, um, you know, how did you get into the entertainment industry? Just a, a little bit about what you've done, because you have worked a lot in public relations um, in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, my story is interesting. I went to school um, for I took an advertising course. So my background is in advertising. Um, met Lola Placu when I was in college, mm -hmm. and she was promoting the first ever French Montana concert. And at the time, you know, I'm a girl from Malvern, so Jeez. we all listened to French Montana, yep. Max B. Like, that was the underground hip-hop. Like, that was our thing. Yep. So when we found out that uh, French Montana was coming to town, we were super excited. We're like, damn, is he even going to get across the border? Mm. Um, from there, Lola had put something out on uh, Twitter just kind of looking for some hungry, ambitious, young college kids that would want to help promote the show. I said, of course, oh, this is my bag. Like, this is easy. I know everybody who wants to go to the show. So sure enough, and back then I didn't have a car. So I'm taking the train on meeting people at Kennedy Station, selling tickets there, going to Scarborough Town, selling tickets there. Hustler. At my college, Ooh. selling tickets there. Sold Hustler. so many tickets. She was so impressed with me um, that she said, wow, you, you sold a lot of tickets really quickly. Like, I'm going to give you some more. Gave me some more tickets, sold those. And then uh, she said, do you want to meet French? And I said, of course. Hell yeah. So went to the uh, went to the meet and greet, met French there. Then uh, he was amazing. Met him again uh, the next because uh, he was he was there overnight. Mm -hmm. So met him again the next day, went back to uh, this is going to sound crazy, but it wasn't like that. Went to the hotel in the lobby. So you know, <laughs> in the lobby with Lola there. No judgment over here, no Lisa. With Lola there. No judgment. So it wasn't any it wasn't anything like that. Um and uh Chinks uh Chinks who was his mm -hmm. his uh artist and his best friend who passed away, rest in peace to him. Yeah, he was there as well. Um and that was that was kind of the kickoff for me. That was like the energizer, like wow, yeah. like okay, like I kinda like it. So I had a feel for music, but didn't quite know where I was gonna fit, didn't right. didn't understand. And so a couple years after that, didn't really do anything in music um got into tv um so i, I work in tv sales still to this day so mm -hmm. media um with city tv fx etc mm -hmm. um from there had a baby when i was on mat leave i was just like what do i really want to do and that was what sparked my interest in music again so started branding myself that way ended up connecting uh with an artist that we, uh, we met on linkedin castilla shout out to uh Cass. Shout out to, yep. Um, yep still work still work with her yep. um to this day and uh, that was really it that was really the trigger and from there i just kind of immersed myself um and said you know what i didn't necessarily go to school for music so how am i going to make up for this started branding myself learning just teaching myself youtube university and then ended up um, applying for the remix project Got into the remix project, Ooh. and yeah, from there met Gavin, and Gavin introduced me to you guys. Hey. Um, <laughs> Big up to Gav. So, so Global yeah, Gav. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was that was all in the span of like I don't even know how many years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I've and always loved here. music. My grandmother was a singer. My mom um, was a dancer yeah. at one point, um, and had went on tour and taught like taught people in uh i want to say tokyo yeah. how to dance yeah. so um music has always been in my background to some degree but i didn't want to be a performer even though i did have that background as well yeah. i don't like being in front of the camera i'm actually uncomfortable right now <laughs> <laughs> i like Can't being tell. behind the scenes i love being behind the scenes and i just needed to figure out where um ultimately i was going to fit all right right that's amazing man uh, and you do such a good job. I can't say it enough, you know, from your uh, that whole story. I mean, I, I remember Lola back in the day and how she would just she was taking over everything. And, you know, uh, not just as a female, but just as a promoter, as just somebody in the scene, like in the city, you can mention her name anywhere. It felt like and she was good, yo, you know, so. And then, you know, Gavin was my first manager and mm -hmm. we, we started doing music together and I can't hearing your story it just makes me feel like you know when you you, you have a draft you mm. know what i mean mm. and it's like you got rookies yeah and you don't know who's gonna be who <laughs> or who's gonna do what and i think gav messed up a little bit man he just he's like i don't know what uh, alicia's gonna be know, you know what i mean I like well, let's see what, what she does over at block trade and she's become like a, just a shining star, man. rookie of the year like everything you know, i see a bright bright future for anything that you do uh we're just trying to hold on to that contract for as long as we can until <laughs> she's 
Beyonce's um, publicist oh, yeah. or something like oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to her actual publicist, who's a Grenadian woman, Event. Hey. She is a boss, and I definitely look up to her, and I study a lot of the stuff that she does um, with Beyonce from Destiny's Child. She's worked with Mariah Carey. She works with Chloe and Hallie now. So I that is mm. um, somebody in PR that I look up to and I study. That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Well, question then. Um, since you've been here from the culmination of, of uh, Dreams Don't Have Deadlines, what have you learned from all the guests that we've had on here, from all the inspiring motivational stories and, and messages? Has there anything that stood out to you that you've taken away from that? Um, Definitely. I want to say Pollyanna's episode has really stuck with me. Hey. Um, in particular, I just felt like I could really relate to a lot of the things that she's saying that she um, had mentioned in her episode about really hustling and like working hard and um, something that I would like to apply that she had done to um, amass the success that she has is, um, you know, she puts in she would put in two hours before her nine to five and two hours after her nine to five. And so even though like you know, you're hustling and you're, you're working your nine to five and you're probably thinking, how am I going to get out of this? Um, it feels like you're, you're on a hamster wheel every day. It's like the same day is happening over and over and you want that dream to happen, but you're figuring out how are you going to make that actually um, your reality? She worked at it every day. She dedicated that extra four hours building herself up to the point where she was making money from her nine to five. She was utilizing all the resources they had available. And then she ultimately, when she felt comfortable, was able to branch off on her own and build something for herself. So that's kind of the, that's the episode that I really uh, took something from and was like, I really would like to apply that. Mm -hmm. um, Which is a great one. Which yeah. is a great one. If you, if anybody hasn't watched that episode yet, I highly recommend it. Uh, her story is incredible. A uh, good friend of mine. And uh, yeah, she's, she's she will make you feel lazy. She yeah. will make you feel lazy. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing with your life? Well, mm -hmm. well, Marwan, we have 24 hours in the day. How are you utilizing them? Because I did this X 18 Tracks. hours a day, like yeah, no, 18 hour works. days for she so long. That work. No, she's right. she's incredible. Mm -hmm. A great, great guest. Um, so I wanted to ask uh, you, Alicia, for the podcast itself. Um, how do you see it today, and where would you like it to to go? Hmm. Um, I think we have a diamond in the rough. I think we have something that is so special and so amazing, but it's just undiscovered. So we we have, I think we have an incredible podcast, a great team. Um, the storytelling that you guys do is, is amazing and you really dig deep and it's not something typical of the city. So I just think we're an undiscovered gem. Yes. You know? Yes. We're an yeah. undiscovered gem. And the I moment agree. that the right person sees it, I think that's ultimately because we have it in us to make it happen. But I think, um, you know, sometimes you need you need that backing support. Of course. And I think ultimately when we get that, that's really going to just kind of take us to the next yeah. level. Yeah. yeah. I have to agree with that. Yeah, I agree sure. with that. Um, there's something about being a hidden gem too, you know, that I really kind of like and i i'm sure we'd want to be you know joe rogan or drink champs or pivot or any of these big or calling in samir, Call samir. <laughs> shout out Colin. <laughs> or and any samir. of these huge motivational podcasts that we like to listen to but yeah. um you know uh there's something about building our equity you yeah. know and building it up and, and growing with everybody else and kind of being something that's discoverable like mm -hmm. that people can share and said if you haven't if you're looking for a new podcast this might be the spot for you you mm -hmm. know and like you said it's not uh typical of what you see in toronto with mm -hmm. every other podcast out here it's right. something different mm -hmm. i don't think there's anything like what we're doing no nope. i don't think there's anything in canada Right, right. You know, I like think, like yeah. us, you know, yeah. and and we take pride in that, man, mm -hmm. and and I think that's where we want to be. There's something so. about our being small and independent. There's yeah. a certain flow to it, certain like magic to it that I know is not gonna last forever. Yeah, because the bigger we get, the the less independent we're we're gonna be. There's more limitations. Exactly. Like yeah. So this For is sure. like I love learning as we go, making mistakes, figuring out what's what. Yeah. Um, because you it's say that you know, now, but yeah. on the meetings, it's not, uh, you don't love it. Though. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I do. I know it's part of the journey. Um, In the but moment, though, it, it's not. It's that. like we have a weekly call that a few people just never seem to get right. It's like, what do you mean we have a meeting at, at seven o'clock every Wednesday for the past, past year plus? Anyways, yeah. uh, back to Alicia. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your dreams and your goals. Um, today and where you want to go. 
So, you know, you're, you're helping us manage this podcast. Um, you're helping us with public relations in the company. Um, but you obviously have goals and aspirations. Uh, so because we want to check in with you, you know, throughout this process. So what are the next goals and dreams for you? Hmm. I mean, on a personal level, just kind of develop my brand a little bit. I think yeah. that uh, I do have something valuable to offer and I do want to touch people. So I think really just uh, kind of pushing myself and forcing myself out of my comfort zone to really put myself out there, I think, is ultimately how I'm going to achieve that. Mm -hmm. um, and on a grander scale, um, I think another thing that I love about this team is one thing that we all have in common is community and caring about people and giving back. Um, and that's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I'm passionate about the area that I grew up in, um, grew up in Malvern, then I moved to uh, m &L. I also lived at another block, um, EP. So like there's, you know, I grew up all, all around Scarborough and um, I then moved to Pickering. And when I moved to Pickering, it was like, even though it's not that far, I really noticed a difference in like the schooling and, and noticing like the, the access to certain things that in, in my previous schools or my previous area, I did not have access to. So that's something that I'm super passionate about, finding a way to make it more equitable mm. um, for everybody because there's so many incredible people um, in, in the neighborhoods that I grew up in that are just like like we are, un, undiscovered gems, like mm -hmm. hidden gems that nobody knows about um, that are just kind of waiting or not, they're not waiting, but um, that opportunity is waiting for, for them. them. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they're, they're brilliant. They're they're incredible and they have a certain level of authenticity that you you can't put a price on mm -hmm. um so that's something that i really care about so giving that's back up. is a big thing for yeah you, it seems like It'll make that yeah. happen um well, if there is one major goal this year that you want to achieve what would it be hmm that's a good question yeah and we could cut it out so it could blend in. It could blend <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, no, yeah. I, wa I want those wheels to turn right here <laughs> yeah. live <laughs> yeah i mean for this year, we have what five months left to the year. Five months left. Yeah. I mean, I want to be grow... a personal goal. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for the t as far as the podcast, I would love for us to grow our viewership. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we have something so great, and I think um, the more people that view it, it really is ultimately going to help them because mm -hmm. we do help people. So, if we can increase our viewership, I think we're ultimately going to help more people. I agree. Um, what about an Alicia Wilmer? For me, goal? on a on a personal scale, um, I mean, anything. It, it would have to do anything to do with my daughter. Right. Like anything that would make her happy. Like mm -hmm. I, a, a long term goal of mine is to really get her in the best possible schooling that I can. Mm. That's something that I really, really care about. I think that. Um, if you can set your kids up for success earlier, I just I want to give her a, a head start on life if I if I can, you know, the, the head start that I didn't get. That's what mm -hmm. ultimately what I would like to give her. So, Which you are. You yeah. Are, you know? Yeah. So that that's something that I care about. If, if I can make that happen this year, I mean, that would be amazing. Watch out Hollywood. because She's also amazing. an actress, yeah, right? She's also an actress. Hey. So I'm going to plug her um, <laughs> right now. You know, she is an actress. She's signed to an agency. She's doing Ooh. her thing. I'm super, super proud of her. Um, so yeah, so any way that I can um, make my daughter's life easier would be a success for me. That's 100%. amazing. Love it. Love it. Love it. And where can people find you? They can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Threads. You mm -hmm. can find me on Twitter. That's right. Alicia No Keys. Some people don't know <laughs> that it what the N O K E. It's No, no keys. keys because I'm not Alicia Keys. keys. Hey. <laughs> it's just that it's simple. A different Alicia I'm not there. Alicia Keys. I'm Alicia Me. That's so, right. <laughs> that's Alicia it. Mees. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, you thank for you. for blessing us with your presence today. Mm -hmm. thank you. For now people get back to, to see. work. Yes. Back to work. <laughs> I think this was great for people to see. You know, put a, put a face to the name on yeah. all the things that happen behind the scenes for us. So the dreams don't have deadlines, problems, cuts. Can't thank you enough. Uh, I'm Marlon Nominee. This is Juice Rochester, Rochester Juice. And we got Alicia No Keys, Alicia Wilmot. Hey! <laughs> thank you. That's all right. <laughs> Work hard and I handle my business. Look up in the sky, whole squad, let's get it. No limit, no. no, no.